All right. Um, I just wanted to come on here and uh, share with you the message about um, obedience and contentment. Obedience and contentment. Obedience and contentment. Um, quick back ground story. Um, I, on this journey that God has me on of um, awakening into who God truly is and how God sees me and healing the wounds and internal things within myself and walking with God on that path. One of the things that I want to share with you on today is obedience um this stood out to me today um and actually yesterday and um, i want to share it with you and i also want to share with you the importance of being content where you are um and so first thing um on my journey um i would say the beginning of the top of the year um i was a worshiping God in church. I was attending another church and I was worshiping God. And I felt, um, I, I was thinking about getting involved in the church and joining the church and um, singing um, on the praise team. And I felt this no in my spirit. Um, and not only did I feel this no in my spirit and it, it, it felt like it was in my soul as well. Um, and uh, I felt that my soul was supposed to go back to my previous church. And I really didn't, I had my reasons of why I didn't really want um, to go. I even had my full reasons on this whole path of not really wanting to follow and trust the voice of God um, because of my fear, because I thought, just my belief patterns and one of the uh, the belief patterns that I remember having and still I'm mindful of those belief patterns to this day and that is thinking that my way is better and that was the thing that God was trying to free me from so somebody needs to hear that when uh, there were so many times and instances in my life where I was operating in what I thought was my own strength and not believing God to be Lord over my life, Lord over my emotions, Lord over my mental state, Lord over, excuse me, Lord over my spiritual and physical, Lord over all of me, Lord over my finances, Lord over how I'm showing up, Lord over my health, Lord over everything that is a part of me. And um, fast forward back to the when I was in church, uh, in, the, in the, the church that I was visiting and God said, uh, I felt this and more in my spirit more so um, than God saying, I felt the no in my spirit. And um, I've been on this journey long enough to be very in tune to that. Um, and so I did not uh, uh, join that church and I did not saying nothing wrong or anything it was just I felt the no in my spirit and that's another thing sometimes when God tells you to do something some or remove you from something or to stay in something whatever God is instructing for you to do oftentimes sometimes there could be whereby it's not a bad space like it's not like well, well why are you telling me to move God or why are you telling me to stay it's if the situation ain't bad you know, it's not a bad thing. I think sometimes it can become easier when a situation is bad, right? And God is telling you to move. It's like, oh, whew, okay. But 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 it, it it is all about obedience because sometimes when God is instructing you to do things, sometimes it may not make sense and by what you see. There has been another instance in my life in on this journey where God told me that your particular assignment, your chapter is over in this particular area and it is time, this is your last day there. And I was like, I felt it in my spirit leading up to that point. Um, but uh, the point I'm making is the environment wasn't negative. 
the environment wasn't toxic from what my eyes saw. But God told me in my spirit that this is your last day there. This is your last day here. And you, I don't know what that was attached to. I don't know um, what God saw that I didn't see. And to be honest with you, the mature part of me, it didn't really matter um, why God moved me. God just told me to move. And when God said it, I took it upon it. I obliged. And there, there you have it. On today, I uh, and on yesterday, as I mentioned, when I talked about obedience, obedience, uh, a a a praising leader had asked me and asked the congregation, why is it that they have joined a particular ministry? And I told them that I my, the main th reason why I joined is because of obedience. I said, uh, because if I had it my way, I would have been doing something else. And every time I have tried to go my own way, I've always felt this tug to pull back. And so the whole essence of this is obedience. And sometimes you don't want to obey because of your flesh. You don't want to obey because of your fear. You don't want to obey because you think it's a sign of weakness. You may not want to obey because you don't trust. Um, but I'm encouraging you to obey the voice of God, even when it doesn't make sense. Obey God. And the reason why I'm encouraging you to obey God is because it is not only attached to you, like your obedience unlocks the freedom in someone else. Your obedience, I'll say it again, your obedience locks the freedom in someone else. Your obedience uh, heals and set others free. Your obedience is bigger than yourself. And there was a level of, of peace that I have within my soul. Imagine going for so many years, operating in your own strength and putting God's uh, instructions in the background of your mind. Imagine thinking, oh, well, you know, I hear you, God, but I'm about to make this happen. Or I hear you, but that has to wait. Imagine if you relied solely on your strength and you did not follow the voice of God and not lean into his strength and allow your weakness to be made perfect in his strength. Imagine trying to carry a weight. Imagine trying to carry and do it all in your own, in your own strength. That is um, a form of pride. And for some of us, we're just not even aware because it's just what we are survival skills and how we were raised and what, what we were taught. But I'm here to shift the paradigm because God shifted the paradigm inside of me. God began shifting the paradigm inside of me. And I would encourage you to allow the Holy Spirit begin to shift the paradigm inside of you and allow the Holy Spirit to guide you as you obey what you hear the Holy Spirit saying for you to do. Some people might say, well, how do I know that I'm hearing the voice of God? You have, first of all, our spirits always know. And if you're, even if you're a little unshaky about it, you still lean into it. Lean into it by faith. God, I believe this is what you're telling me. And so by my act of faith, and you keep going, and as you keep going by faith through time, through God's timing, God reveals to you in part, or in God's timing, God shows you or will give you little, you know, what does it say, God winks or little reasons as to why it was important that you obeyed. Your obedience, we say obedience is better than sacrifice. Your obedience is bigger than you. Your obedience is for your children. Your obedience is for your family. Your obedience stops generational curses. Your obedience uh, allows the blessing, like the, the, the blessing to flow through you. It is in your obedience. That's why it's important to trust and obey. Sometimes, even if you don't, quite always have the trust thing and trust factor, you know, locked in. Obeying by faith is a good start. Obeying by faith is a good start. And then last but not least, I talked about obedience. And the second part um, I talked about, um, what else is I going to talk about? 
Now, mind you, a blank. Um, but obedience is is um, is everything. Thank you, Holy Spirit. So the the other part I was going to talk about is being content where you are. Being content where you are. For some of you, you might be in the trenches. For some of you, you might be in a, a fiery place. For some of you, you might be in a dark place. Um, some For some of you, whatever season or chapter that you're in, I am encouraging you to find the gratitude in what is around you. You might, uh, I don't know what your situation is. You might be um, in a very uncomfortable situation. For those of you who are in a very uncomfortable situation and you're trying to figure out how am I going to get out of this, I would encourage you because in act in an obedience of the voice of God, I'm encouraging you to be content where you are. To be content where you are whatever state you are in whatever process the holy spirit wants to do the complete work in you see he says he who begins a, a he who begins a, a good work in you will be faithful to complete it will be faithful to complete it what is it that god wants to complete in you what is it that god wants to complete in you for some of you god is healing some things that you need to be girded um, in God's truth, but you got to go through that process. For some of you, your emotions need to be healed. For some of you, there's areas in your life that God wants to grow and stitch and prune. And, but, but if you're trying to rush it, if you're, if you're focusing on what is wrong, or what's going on, what wrong is happening in your life, and trust me, I am a, a person that has done it. And I'm mindful of it. I just did it yesterday and I had to check myself. I had to check myself, okay, of being having a level of responsibility and having a level of sovereignty over oneself, being responsible and recognizing, you know, for some of us, we got to know um, there's some things that God wants to show you and God wants to reveal within you. There's some, there's a maybe some trust, value, uh, trust factor that God wants to show you who God really, really, truly is. But if you rush the process, if you uh, stay within leaning into your own strength, if you um, focus on uh, what you think uh, is best and you allow your pride and your fear or in your that stuff to get in the way, it can allow you to miss what God is showing you. It can allow you to miss what God is showing you. Be content. Show gratitude where you are. I'm going to say that again. Show gratitude where you are. Even if you can't find a thing. If you can't find nothing to be grateful for. You're breathing. You're watching this video. You woke up this morning. You laid in your bed. You got food to eat. Um, your, your, your family is safe. You may be sick in your body. Okay, but I'm still breathing. I can see the paint on my walls. Um, go outside. The, the flowers are blooming. Um, go outside. Look at the clouds move. Um, go outside in nature and appreciate oxygen. Appreciate the things that you are seeing around you because you can miss and be so focused on the heartache. And I get it. I get it. I'm not saying not feel. But I'm saying there is power in gratitude. There is power in gratitude in your now. Because you, when, when God shifts the chapter, because chapters have seasons and seasons um, change. Chapters end, new chapters begin, and seasons change. Chapters end, new chapters begin, and seasons change. And seasons change change it is a promise that your season will change and in the meantime find ways to be content and show gratitude where you are there's a doctor doctor uh the late dr wayne dyer says the more that you look at things if you focus on more of the of, of the thing the more of the thing it becomes right 
<laughs> and so showing gratitude allows your mind to focus on more things to be grateful for. If you have a, a, an issue with going home or you might be living by yourself or struggling with loneliness or struggling with um, depression, focus on what are you grateful for? Do it. Do it now. Do it now. Focus on something to be grateful for. Shift your mind. Shift your heart. Shift your spirit. Because you don't want to have a, an, an ungrateful heart when that season change. Because it's not in the things. It's not in the things that makes us be grateful. Meaning um, in the tangibles. It is showing gratitude for what is. It is showing gratitude for life. It is showing gratitude for breath. And then you step into that power and it begins to shift things. So I hope that you learned something. I'll download, um, I will leave the, not download, but I will leave a link at the bottom where um, you can download my free gratitude journal. It's a 31 day gratitude journal. I'll leave the link at the bottom. Also, if you want to uh, work with me, I do one-on-one -on -one coaching. And I also have some other uh, resources that I'll leave at the link. But other than that, thank you guys for watching. And um, like and subscribe or share if this message helped you. Bye.